Today, I will speak about what to do with the illusory nature of the reality. Let's call this monologue practical applications. So there are several paths. One path is the path of devotion. On this path we pray, we love God, we connect to God with passion. Of course it is a very valid path. There is another path, the path of detachment. On this path you detach from everything. You still do your work, you still go through your life, but in a detached way, in a way of equanimity, by keeping the balance, keeping the balance, keeping the balance. Not attached to anything, but looking at everything and, and at yourself with loving kindness. And the third path, of course, is duo. You combine both. You combine a balance and a passion. And of course, how do you can combine incompatible things, right? How do you combine incompatible things? Right? Right? by alternating one and another. So when you feel like really desperate or when you feel like really passionate, that would be the path of devotion. And when you feel really desperate and when you feel really passionate, it could be also a path of detachment. You can detach, detach, detach. Both are valid, both are valid, both are valid. And of course there is a million other paths. I remember one point in my life, one moment in my life when it was before gym, I still met a few channelers and a few psychics and this time it was a communication, a short communication with, with a Syrian friend through a psychic. And I sent an invitation for the healers to work with me, for the extraterrestrial healers to work with me and help me to become a healer. And they said no. <laughs> they said it's not your path. Your path is the path of research. Science and research. And how do they know, right? Don't I have a free will? The free will? Can't I choose? At that point, I clearly wanted to sidetrack and go in a different direction. And I became a healer. But later I realized there was a still passion to discover things beyond. So healing for me was absolutely interesting. But I wasn't it partly a researcher, partly a discoverer. Partly I was there to show others the way. So for me, showing the way to others is uh, ah, the main driving force. That's what makes me passionate. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I'm here. One of the reasons. Not, o not the only one. Not the only one. So if you are on your path, if things go r as usual, reasonably, reasonably positive, reasonably positive. If you are in a, in a moving balance, if you are in a moving balance, 
Of course, first I have to congratulate you for being there. And then while being there, I invite you to combine your understanding of illusory nature of the reality with your work in this world and bring it closer to you to help on your path. You're already doing it, of course. Everyone here is a magician. So I congratulate a magician in you. I inspire a magician in you. I invite the magician in you to help you in your work. There is unlimited number of ways to, to use magic to help your work. I will remind you about the two-point method. Suppose you do a healing, a remote healing. So you focus on the person, you connect to the person. And then you start sensing the environment, sensing the environment, and find the first point in the space. Look for that point and find that point. So now I'm working on you, I'm doing the healing on you specifically, on that person who watches. So for everyone it will be a different healing. So I'm looking for that point for you. And I find it. In the air, in the middle of the air. And then I start sensing to the second point. And I look for the second point. Anywhere, intuitively, just feel the, feel the space. Feel the space. And as I find some trace of guidance, I inflate it, inflame it, not inflate, light it up, I light it up, brighten it up until I find that perfect spot. And while, while, while I'm there, I'm concentrating on these two spots, two spots. So these were actions of doing, actions of doing. I found the two spots. And if I'm uncertain, I can again look around. But since I already defined the spot, it's much easier to find it. I kind of am attracted to both of them. I'm now attracted. The space is... My consciousness grabbed the, these two spo spots in the space. And now, the next step is not doing... Not doing anything in this physical world. I'm going inside... And I'm transforming you through acceptance. So it is, it is no time, no space acceptance. So I will symbolize this by omen, but really it's, there is nothing else to do here. Nothing else to do. So I'm transforming your health in your disorder into order, your sickness into health, your imperfection to perfection, your imbalance to balance. And that's about it. So that's a two-point meditation, two-point method of transforming the reality. It can work on uh, not only on healing but on any any practical. goal on any practical goal so one of the gifts which i found a really helpful step in understanding the reality i would better say understanding the world which is an illusion was tarot cards, tarot cards. So tarot cards are an ancient, very ancient system, which is thought, which is taught to us, we are being taught that it, is, it comes from prehistoric times. And it reflects uh, the nature of the world, how it was constructed, how this illusion was designed. That's why they are so po powerful.
So in, with, the, with the cards, you interact with the spirit in both ways. You learn about the situation, learn about the world, but then you can transform it. So there is a... Again, the magician's work of transformation of the world through working with the elements, with the design of the world. And there are many other ways of transforming the world through magical ways. The prayer, mantras, symbols, geometry, numbers, intention, dance, healing, energy healing, handwork, music, drumming, collective work, dancing, collective dancing, rituals, flame, Candles, air, water, work with the water, nature, work with the nature, inviting helpers and letting them do the work, an invitation to the helpers, to the spiritual, elemental, angelic helpers, alien helpers. Stones, earth, ground, astrology. No, actually, no. Astrology is a way of not transforming the world, but knowing when to transform it. I would say it's, a, it's, at least I don't know the way to transform the world through astrology. Maybe there is one, I'm not sure. But yes, stars, that would be the, the proper way. Stars, working with the stars, working with the star energies, alien energies, and the, the sun is a star and the earth is a planet. So working with the planet energies, that's one of the most powerful. And part of it is doing, and part of this is acceptance. Part of that is doing, part of that is acceptance, part of this is research, and part of this is understanding. Understanding. And for those of you who are in darkness right now, who are depressed, who are on the bottom, who are desperate, who are in fear and sickness. For those, I invite help. And I speak a little bit from my experience, how, how, I, how, do, I, how, how do I deal with it. Step one first, accepting the situation where you are, allowing it to be. Allowing, allowing, looking at yourself. Place your hands on your heart, on your stomach. Either way, heart, stomach, or both hands, one on the heart, one on the stomach. Like that. And accept. Be in your body. You are still in your body. You are still alive. You are still in your body. You are still alive. Accept that. Because when you accept it, you start from somewhere. You start from the place of no panic anymore. No fear anymore. That's where you are. Look outside of time, look at your birth, look at your death, and just accept that there is life, there is a beginning and the end, and just accept that your, your body will be dead sometime, but you will not be dead, you'll be just fine. That is a huge help in jumping over the fear jumping over the situation. Realize it's all an illusion. So just understanding the illusory nature of the reality helps a lot with getting yourself out of the trouble, out of the depression. Next. Invite help. 
pray invite help from the aliens, your favorite ones. And focus on positivity, focus on positive things. Positive aliens, invite positive aliens, invite the ones you really trust, happy ones, spiritual ones. You still have a freedom of choice. If you already made an agreement, an agreement, made agreements with negative ones, break them. Say, I change your ma my mind, now I go the other way. You are entitled for a change. <laughs> Now, catch yourself on, uh, on sarcasm, catch yourself on being pessimistic, catch, catch yourself on being critical, being critical of yourself, being critical of others, and being a victim. If you victimize yourself, catch yourself and turn it around, turn it around. That is a big topic. That what I find in myself and find in and many others who I just see myself there, see myself in you. I see how people take a good movement and then just as it moves forward, they just habitually break the pattern and move it down. Uh, an example. I say everything will be fine and they say no 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 everything is terrible and I don't believe it will be fine and um, so catch yourself in that and kind of analyze what you say and change it into positive there is no other way around you have to find a way in a positive direction so suppose I have a friend who is constantly complaining constantly complaining and um, people try to help him. Angelic spirits try to help him, but when his mind is only or always 99% focused on negative things, there is nothing you can do. Like the healer, we, we come to the friend do the Reiki, uplift his spirit so he becomes happy, laughs for a second, for a minute, for, for the session. But then after the session, his mind habitually goes back to the depression, back to sadness, back to the fear, back to the rejection of the positivity. There is little that I can do here. So it's up to him to choose positivity, to stop complaining, to stop dragging himself down he finds some weird pleasure in feeling pity for himself and he finds some good energy finds some energy in people when he complains to people and people give him some substitute for love and kindness so he begs for kindness from others through complaining and feeling himself down, feeling himself unhappy. So watch your thought, watch what you think, and direct your thought into positive direction. And there are many ways to direct your thought in a positive direction. One of them is to look at the beauty around. Yeah, that's one of the best ways. Look at the beauty of the nature. The beauty is an excuse, a huge excuse, a wonderful excuse, a major excuse for the imperfection of the reality. The beauty is still here and the earth is beautiful, the nature is beautiful. So take it easy, take the depression as easy. It is normal, it is absolutely normal way of developing the soul. The soul goes through the spiral and if you don't go through sadness once in a while, there is something wrong in your development. The sadness, the desperation, the trial, trials are there for a reason. It's part of this illusion. That's one of the 
ways how this illusion is set up, this world is set up to give us trials, to give us as much challenge as we can handle, or a little bit more. Just a little bit more than we can handle. But at some point you'll be back on track. It's hard to believe that it will happen, but it just happens naturally. So just looking in the past, looking at your past depressions, past down times, past downs, you can see that you were in trouble and you got out of it. And that's where the illusory nature of the reality is the strongest. One day you're up, one day you are, you are down, some days you are desperate and some other days you're full of hope. So when you are down, asking for help from other people, getting help from other people is absolutely essential. From some situations you cannot get yourself out. It is just the nature of the situation, nature of the challenge that it can be only held by other person, by another person. Sometimes a healer cannot heal himself without the help of the other healer. The other healer comes, gives their prayer, energy, karma, luck, positivity, and that helps. And my personal experience, I, I listen to a lot of music and books and YouTube videos, and that's what you do now, right? You, you watch YouTube videos, but audio books is, has something very different than, than YouTube videos, because they're first written and then narrated, there is even more energy there. There is more wisdom and a book can hold a much more complicated, complex, bigger thought, bigger concepts than on average, than a YouTube video. So audio books are absolutely great. So um, I just, when, when I'm down, I watch, listen to some movies, listen to some books, and that just helps me to get through the night, as, um, as they say. Chanting is a great way. So chanting carries, carries the positivity through the darkness. When you're in good mood, chant. And when you're in bad mood, that chant gives you that connection, that energy connects your down with your high state. And there is a surge, there is tunneling, so you can reconnect to the source of energy. And now I feel the coldness is coming here, so I need to start wrapping up. So through some barriers you cannot pass, so you have to go around. Some things at some things that sometimes you just have to give up and wait for their better time, wait, wait for the better situation. Stars change, the planets change. Your, your other helpers, the help comes in specific time. So playing with time is essential. And finding energy, finding strength, finding balance, even in the darkest of times, and then building on it, starting the flame, igniting the flame, and uh, feeding it with your love and hope. Finding your path, changing yourself. The past you might be dying, or the past you might be over, but finding a new part of yourself, new expression of yourself, new path for yourself. Okay, I cannot be a healer. I'm a scientist. I can be a scientist. I can be a monk. I cannot be a monk. I am a teacher. I cannot be a teacher. I am a caregiver. I am not a caregiver. I am an observer of beauty. And I, I'm not an observer of beauty. I allow the world to pass through me and through by accepting the world as it is, I improve the world. <sighs> Amma, Amma, Amma.
With that, I conclude today's monologue. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.